What is going on my fellow weebs? Chrono here and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be doing another one of those Chrono's campfires where we sit down and just have a bit of a conversation. But to be honest, to start out, I do want to do these sort of videos with other members of the community. So I will be reaching out, talk to some of their individuals. But today, I just want to talk with you guys about something that really does concern me quite a bit. So on the 25th, Sega released an article talking about they will be implementing Wellbeing's anti-malware tool um, or anti-malware tool into PSO2 on the PC version. And uh, this has caused quite an uproar in the PSO2 community. Now, I'm sure if you guys have been following social media when it comes to PSO2, but it's been a solid probably month and a half of just uproar after uproar after uproar. And it's getting to be a bit exhausting. The point where I've opened up Twitter and just quite literally closed it on multiple occasions. Now, the reason I'm making a video talking about this topic specifically is for a couple of things. One, there might be some people that really don't understand what's actually going on, like an informed decision on what, what to do moving forward. Um, I don't create content for you guys just to blindly listen to everything I say. I want you guys to be able to find this information out yourselves and make your own informed decisions, which is why we show where we gather all of our information from. That way you guys can go out there and do the same. If, let's say, for example, I take a couple of days to make a video about this. And two, I don't want to bring you guys drama-like news consistently. I know in the past, you know, we've, we've talked about a lot of topics that just are things that I want to talk about, but sometimes I can just have those conversations with my friends or on stream and just get that sort of thing out of my head and I have to bring it to you in video form every time. But this is something I do feel passionate enough about that I want to talk with you guys about. So let's go over what's going on. Let's pull up the article really quick and uh, let's go through it. All right, so we've got this 25th popped up. Implementation of Wellbeing's anti-malware tools or tools program into the PC version. The new anti-malware tool manufactured by Wellbeing will be gradually implemented into the PC version. Um, after the scheduled maintenance on 11.1 uh, shows that for the you know, for Windows and Epic versions, it'll be on the 1st, and then for the Steam version, it'll be on the 6th. Wellbeing's anti-malware program will be applied following implementation but it'll still be possible to switch between the previously implemented implemented and protect game guard via the game launcher. If you encounter an error when starting the game or doing gameplay and you believe it's caused by the anti-malware program, please try starting the game in compatibility mode for the game launcher. And then it shows just how to do that, right? So a couple of things kind of stick out to me when I read through something like this. First off, a new anti-malware tool program manufactured by Wellbia. Now you could kind of look at this a couple of different ways. Um, first off, the anti-malware tool that people are freaking out about isn't new. It's been around since, I think, what, 2018, if not earlier. Um, it could be just new to us because we haven't used it, but this does give the air of something different. And this will be gradually implemented into the PC version of the game over those two days and gives the ability to disable it. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to the anti-malware tool that we're referring to, it's um, essentially like a rootkit that gets installed into your computer. A lot of Asian countries use this to uh, to stop people from essentially, well, I'm not going to put this. So and the tool they're talking about is Zinc Code 3. And Zinc Code 3 essentially was designed and created for, um, for countries where you have to essentially have your real identity bound to accounts you create online. This is to stop things like hacking and to stop like cyber crimes from happening or people from basically committing fraud, so on and so forth, certain games. Most of the JP community is aware of this because, you know, to create a JP PSO2 account, you quite literally need to live in Japan. And if you don't, you're essentially committing identity, thro identity fraud um, to play the game itself, which goes against their TOS, which is why we didn't continue our JP account. Had some assistance with creating one way back in the day, and though I had a good time, learned a lot, walked away from it as soon as we had the ability to have a global account, and have never gone back to it since. Here and there, but realistically speaking, we don't mess with that account anymore. Now, as far as, as this tool goes, this has been around since 2018, and it has a pretty negative stigma. So that hasn't stopped a lot of companies, a lot of games, from using it. Some people have a very hard stance on never touching it, while others don't really pay that much attention. I myself personally, I do have a, um, a service called Legal Shield where I'm able to send out information and ask questions from a legal standpoint, not a legal advice. I would not ever take it. I would recommend seeking your own counsel, but 
I'm covered basically when it comes to making sure that my information is safe. Essentially, any information that's gathered should be gathered privately, should be gathered, um, should be told about, of, of course. And if that information is sold or sent anywhere else or breached for any reason, should be notified as well as uh, if it's sold. And there are lawsuits that are involved with that. So as far as my information is concerned, I'm not concerned about it overall. Um, I don't really store anything like that that I'd be too worried about on my computer as it is in the first place. Uh, so we're, we're all good to go here. But what this does is it, it essentially, Zen Code 3 gathered information and stores it on a third party site, not third party site, but like a third party server um, separately. And the thing is that technically does compromise your security because if that server were to be breached for any reason, the information is gone. You don't, you're not the one that's covering it, right? You don't have your hands on it. Does that mean that that's going to happen? No. We could never have an issue like that ever. There's not even a guarantee that we're going to have Zing Code 3. They don't say it. It's not mentioned anywhere in official, like, official stuff. It even comes off as being something different and new. And to my knowledge, you can't disable Zing Code 3. That's the whole point. It's a rootkit. It's supposed to be there all the time running, and it can cause problems for things like SSDs because of how much write information it has going for it. This is something that was very commonly used for um, Blue Protocol, actually. To keep people from using VPNs or um, using third-party tools to translate the game because they don't want any third-party tools being implemented or being used while playing the game. More of like a shotgun approach. Basically, what they can do is just stop all use of third-party tools that affect the game on um, whether or not they're good or bad. Uh, in this case, like, you know, translating the game is not a big deal, but if someone were to use a third-party tool to you know, cheat or hack into the game or do things they're not supposed to do, gather currency they're not supposed to be able to get a hold of, well, that's a big problem. If you just stop the use of all third-party tools, then you don't have to worry about any of those things happening, whether, again, it be good or bad. Um, this is all to say that, you know, the implementation of this tool, while very invasive, while definitely, you know, security, uh, it can be a bit of a security risk, the whole point of it is to ensure that people aren't cheating and they're not messing around with the game itself. So, I understand its use case. I understand why it was created in the way that it was. It's just implemented into places that, at least in America, we're not okay with. Now, again, I take my own security very seriously, so I have things, checks and balances, put into place that cover myself. But not everyone comes from that perspective. Not everyone grew up the same way. Not everyone has learned the same stuff. So it's important to know about these things. All that to say, we have a very real problem with cheating in PSO2. Um, people cheat for ARCs records, people cheat um, and mess with creative spaces. So for purely, um, just to purely grief other people, and that has happened. And though it doesn't affect everyone, to ignore it would be pretty stupid. And again, just because something doesn't affect you does not mean it doesn't affect the community at, all, at large. It doesn't mean the dev team doesn't need to take, you know, doesn't need to uh, take action against it. It's very important that they do so. Part of the reason why I believe personally why this is happening so close I'm also updating TOS on multiple accounts because a very real thing that players did was they created burn accounts where if they were going to buy Meseta, they would buy it on a burn account and then transfer that over to like, say their real account, whether they, you know, had a legitimate sale up and they would just buy stuff from themselves to transfer the money over, or they would, you know, put something up for a ridiculous price and then go to their account and buy it. That way they can transfer Meseta over that way. Granted, they'd lose a bit of money, but their main account would stay, quote, safe because their main account didn't trade with anyone who was botting or who was you know, selling Meseta. Now they're updating it and they mention things like player conduct, where if you've got multiple accounts, you can be held accountable is what it read like to me personally, but it is a bit vague. So take that with a grain of salt. I would wait for it to update fully into the exact you know, reasons of behind what exactly is going on, which it will. Keep in mind, TOS are legal, it's legal documentation. Notice of an update to TOS and a small update to TOS, while vague, does not mean that that's the final update to TOS. I'm sure it's going to be more in depth and they're going to go in more in depth with it because the more vague you are with something, the more there's left up to interpretation. So, realistically speaking, it's something that will get changed and will get updated. So, I would just keep an eye on it. Either way, all that to say that yes, there's an issue with cheating in PSO2, something that does need to be addressed and something that does need to be looked into. As far as this whole will be anti-malware thing. Is it Zinco 3? I don't know. I'm going to wait for it to be released like everything else when it comes to like when it actually releases and make my decision then. 
is Zinco 3 Patty. It, it sucks. It's pretty terrible. It's probably the worst anti malware cheat thing you can go into um, as any form of a game dev, in my opinion. I feel like this is something that shouldn't really ever exist in PSO2 or any game. Um, I understand why it exists in a lot of Asian games because of their laws and things like that, but I don't agree with it itself. So if we're looking at my personal take, definite L as far as my concern, as far as what I'm concerned about. However, that's not the reason I'm making this video. The reason I'm making this video is not only to give you guys my stance on it, but to talk about something that I feel like is a much bigger problem. I mentioned earlier that the community or, or you know, the community at large has had one or has another or one after another, after another, after another of these pain points that have been popping up, players have been very vocal about. And this one specifically has been one of the worst I've seen. Guys, we need to chill out. Like when I mean we need to chill out, I mean, guys, calm down. Take a breather. Sit down. Grab a juice box. Play some games on your phone. Do something. Because what I have read just by opening social media has been absolutely ridiculous. And you're probably thinking, oh, well, you're just mad that people are quitting the game. No, I totally understand where people are coming from. Again, I stand with you guys on saying this is a bad choice. What I don't stand with is everyone posting every single day about them quitting. Is everyone bringing everything up about how this is end of service, how the game is going to die, so on and so forth. Guys, we're gonna kill this game long before Sega gets there. And it's going to be through our own actions. One thing that I personally take to heart and that I'm very careful with because I know of my stance and where I am in this community is the words that I use, what I say and what I do, and what I post. Because one, as a PSO2 creator, I personally believe that part of being a creator is part of representing the game. Not just Sega giving me something, but me representing what it is to create content for PSO2, being a representative of the game itself, kind of like a soft community manager in a sense. Not really saying that's what Sega is presenting it as, but that's what it feels like, or that's what it looks like to me personally. But on top of that, a lot of people listen to what we have to say. Our words hold weight. And while we can mean the best, sometimes the damage we can do is the worst of any damage that can be done. Now, for some people, that's the intention. I'm not saying that you're not justified in wanting something to go wrong. What I'm saying is that people are legitimately coming from a place of saying that I'm, I'm doing the hard thing to try to help the game. Okay, I don't think you are. I think you're doing the hard thing and I think you're trying to help the game in your own way. I think you're doing more damage to the game than anything else. If I were in a stance that I personally believe that I wanted to quit because of this being implemented, what would happen would be as I move my alliance over to someone I know that's going to stay. That way I'm not ruining the experience for anyone else. Granted, we don't have a huge alliance, but I do that. And then I let my subscribers know, hey, look, guys, we're going to be playing something else. I don't really agree with this implementation, so I'll be removing the game for right now. We'll come back and take a look at it later. Hopefully that's something that'll happen. And that'll be the end of the conversation. If people ask me about it on stream or in a YouTube video, we'll address it, but that's about it. But that has not been what's happened for a lot of people. And you guys are probably thinking, oh, well, you're probably talking about this person or that person or whatever. Guys, I'm talking about everyone. It's not one person. It has been multiple individuals across multiple social media platforms. It's everywhere that I go. And I have looked everywhere. We're talking, and I hate to say it, Facebook. We're talking uh, Reddit. We're talking Twitter. Anywhere that PSO2 has a social media platform, it's been posted and people are talking about it and they're doing it multiple times. Their entire feed is about it. And while I understand wanting to make sure that your voice is heard, there's a difference in making sure your voice is heard and there's a difference in making sure that only your voice is heard. What I mean by that is screaming it into the ether over and over again. Now, your platforms are your platforms. You can do with them whatever you wish to do. However, if people are telling you that this is going to help the game, I highly disagree. By far disagree. I think this is going to do more damage than anything else could have ever done. And the worst part about it is, at the end of the day, this could work. And they could end up not implementing this. Or we could find out that it's not Zing Code 3. And it's something else that can be disabled. Maybe they're working on something new. Who knows? 
we're not at Sega. We don't have the official, like, the news itself. We can make assumptions. People can data mine information and say, oh, well, this code is the same, so it has to be that. Those are things that can absolutely happen. Yes, 100%. I'm not an idiot. I'm not blind to that. That absolutely is the case. But until we know what it is, we really can't, like, until it's there, either it's confirmed or it's released, we don't really know what's actually being released. And the sad truth is, like, what happens if it's not as bad as we originally think? Then what was all of this for? What was all of this uproar for? What did it do? Who did it service? Other than, realistically, our own egos. Because that's, that's kind of what it is. It's an ego thing. That if you scream about this and you tell everyone you're quitting, everyone needs to know about that. Because you can quit and uninstall the game. That's totally fine. But if you have to tell everyone, that means that you've personally felt that everyone else needed to know about this. Not just Sega, but everyone else needed to know about this. And I know people are going to talk about, well, you have to post on Twitter. They tell you to, to give your, your, uh, your feedback. But people have looked at that and they say, give your feedback about the NGS headline, not your feedback about anything ever. But people have looked at that as your feedback about anything ever. And they post it and they put NGS headline on it, hoping that they'll pay attention to it. That's, that is not what they say that thing is for, but it is how it gets used. But man, it is really, really sad to see some of my fellow creators, my fellow ARCs, even in some cases, people I considered friends acting the way they have been over the past few days. I really, really hope this is not as bad as we think it is. But in most cases that I've looked into these situations and I've said, hey, look, let's take a step back. Let's wait for it to come out. It's ended up not being as bad as we thought it was. Um, so I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to make sure that I'm safe. And I recommend that you guys do the same. If you're going to be quitting, hey, I hope you come back when everything is good for you. Whether that be when content releases that you're ready to play that you really want to sink your teeth into. Whether that be when seasonal events disappear forever, apparently. Because I know some people, that's what they are looking for. I don't think that's ever going to happen. Um, but when, when that's what happens for the game itself, when the game is what you want it to be, hopefully we'll see you then. Until then, guys, take care of yourselves. Mental health is a real thing. It affects a lot of people. And I'm not going to go any further into that other than, hey, just look around and see what's happening. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this video all to the end. It's a little longer than I wanted it to be, but I really wanted to talk with you guys about my thoughts and to finish them out, closing out, I'll say, hey, look, I really hope this isn't in code three, but I will say if it is, I'm still going to make content. You know why? Because I want to make content. We've played games like this before in the past. We'll play games like this again in the future. It's been a part of it all the, all the same. But I will definitely be letting Sega know in any, any posts that we have available to it, any videos we talk about it, any surveys that we might get that this isn't something that we want or that the players need to have to uh, keep things locked down. Hopefully they'll find another answer if this is the route they decided to go. Of course, I'm looking forward to reading everything you guys have to say in the comments below because Oh boy, I know people have a lot to say, and I'm sure plenty of people are going to try to educate me on everything they need to know about this. Um, just understand that I've looked into it. Still not that concerned. Either way, I appreciate you guys. Be kind to one another. Be civil to one another because we won't stand for anything else outside of that. And take care of yourselves. Peace out, guys.